I want to have the best anesthetic experience and the best patient outcome uh, for our patients. And so the way to do that is to train the residents. Uh, the way to do that is to deliver the care. And I thought that creating models that would allow the residents to practice clinically appropriate and u useful skills would then allow them to be better at these skills and that would in turn either result in less patient discomfort or better patient care. That's the idea and that's the thing that we're trying to show. What I have here is a uh, it's a wrist model and this would be the same position the wrist would be in if I was to place an arterial line. So this is a shoulder so this would be someone's right right shoulder here and then this is a leg okay and this would be somebody's left left leg so this area right here. I was meeting with a resident colleague and they told me a story of a young man who was shot and no one could get vascular access on him and he ended up uh, dying in part. He obviously had severe wounds but it was frustrating because no vascular access was available and in anesthesia the inability to acquire vascular access is a catastrophe because just about everything we do is through uh, some access point. And so in response to that, I thought, you know, we should train everyone on how to do interosseous lines. Uh, there are commercially available interosseous lines uh, models. Those are out there. But again, I think it would be really inter or I thought it would be very interesting to create something that's based off a CT scan, so it's anatomically correct. It has some tissue around it that you would have to actually go through, and then they're disposable, so that you could actually say like give them to people, or they could live in the lounge, and they're not sequestered in a simulation area. One idea that we've had with these low-cost simulators is that they would actually be allowing us to do just-in-time training or just-in-time practice, so that. You know, if I knew I had to go place an arterial line and I wasn't very good at them, I could get my hands on one of these things, try it a couple times, and then maybe go do it. So that's one of the research projects that we're trying to get going, is whether or not trying this before you do it on a patient improves your success on the patient. So that's part of the reason that we created these, was that it would be a low-cost alternative. You couldn't just you know, have somebody spend a thousand dollars worth of models trying to practice before they go do it on a person. As far as I'm aware, um, this is the only model that allows you to actually aspirate and practice that aspiration component. All the other models don't have anything in the marrow space and so you get in there but you can't do the actual like aspiration part. You know, you can make a lot of these different molds and they're different sizes, you know, big person, small person, child, old person. You can print the bones so that they're thinner or they're thicker so that you have something that feels thick or feels thin. Uh, so that distance between the bone and the and the tissue changes, the thickness of the bone can change, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So I think that's one of the possibilities here.